A crappy looking Excalibur is what I had at Mastery Rank 2, because I remember being jealous of all the other players that had cool looking frames with awesome colors, superhero capes, they were moving so fast and dealing a truck of damage while I was the last at the extract point with 2% damage. But the Sonic Core served me well and today I want to return the favor. Hey guys, hello and welcome back, as always my name is Lazar and today we're gonna be diving deeper into this Mastery Rank 2 secondary weapon, the Sonic Core. I'm gonna be covering a lot of the new player stuff, how to build your weapon, modding, polarity, status chance, status procs, vulnerabilities, resistances and so on and so forth. Needless to say, this is a new player tutorial, so take it as such. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Sonic Core. Let's check out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped, just so you can get a clear understanding of what the Sonic Core is all about. As you can see the weapon is fantastic, at applying crowd control I'm able to ragdoll all of these enemies around with minimal effort and that means that during that time they're not shooting me so I can just finish them off perhaps with a melee attack or using my primary weapon. As to how the weapon actually functions, this is a hand mounted crossbow with a limited range of 15 meters. At the end of those 15 meters the projectile will be detonating in a 5 meter area and knock all of the enemies with this ragdoll effect of sorts. That said, if you were to go in and try to shoot an enemy in the face like so, you will see that the projectile actually will bounce off your target and keep traveling until it reaches those 15 meters and then detonate. Which means it's not a fantastic idea to directly aim at enemies, especially if you're close to them, for example like that. Definitely not. What is a bit smarter using the Sonic Core is to make use out of that fantastic ground control and simply aim for the feet and make the projectile bounce off of surfaces like that. And that's how I recommend you guys use the weapon. Now there's one more thing that should be said. If you're looking for the most amount of damage and all whatnot, though from my point of view that's not exactly what you do with the Sonic Core, you might want to aim above enemies' heads because you want to get the headshot multiplier that is present in Warframe. But again, the Sonic Core is not necessarily about damage. It's about crowd control. Now let's jump into stats and now we're going to be talking about a whole lot of details about weapon modding in general. You'll see that my capacity for mods is 60 out of 60 and your Sonic Core might have only 30 out of 30 if it's just freshly built. You can jump into actions and here you have a whole bunch of options. First of all you have auto install, do not touch it. For the love of god, do not touch it. Next you have the Orokin Catalyst slot. Plugging this one in will double your mod capacity from 30 to 60. You can find these from alerts invasions especially after dev streams or you can pay 20 plat to have one installed. If you're a higher MR player and just interested in the crowd controlling component of the weapon then there is no need to plug in a catalyst and honestly there's no need to mod the weapon at all as, as you saw there it will be able to apply the crowd control without any mods. Next you have the polarization which is how we add a format, swap polarity and focus lens. I'm not gonna go into focus lens because that would mean spoiler so I'm just gonna shut up about this one. Back to the weapon, you will see the number 4 above the star over here. That means that my weapon has been format a total of 4 times. You will see that some of my mod slots don't have anything on them and some of them have these weird symbols. These are called polarities and you have 3 basic polarities. V or Madurai, P or Vazarin and Dash or Naramon. These polarities help us equip more powerful mods. For example, let me show you this one. This is called Hornet Strike. It's a mod that adds 220% uh, more damage to secondary weapons when it's fully maxed out using endo. You will see that the drain at the upper right corner is 14. However, if I was to use it over a matching polarity, that V next to it, it's reduced to 50% rounded down. So basically adding Forma to a weapon allows us to equip more powerful mods. But also, if I was to equip this one over a non-matching polarity, the drain would increase. So bear that one in mind. How do I add a format? Once again, you jump into action, you hit polarization, and here is where you're going to be able to add whatever symbol you want. You can also remove a symbol, and so on and so forth. You can obtain format by opening up relics. You can get the blueprint from the relics, and the actual resources needed to build a format are not high, but it does take a while, so bear that one in mind. The Sonic Core is only worth for mining if you want to get the most damage out of it. Again, if you just want the crowd control, simply forget about it. If the mod polarities are not in the order that you want, you have the option to swap polarity, like so. You can move any polarity anywhere you want and this is 100% free and that will come in extremely useful when you're working with elemental combinations, but more on that later. 
One slight correction however, now I did tell you guys that using a mod over a matching polarized slot will reduce the drain to 50% rounded down, it's actually rounded up. So in the case of Seeker, from 15 to 8. Back to the weapon itself, you got an accuracy of 100 with a critical chance of 10% and a crit multi of 2.0x. The accuracy doesn't really matter because again we're trying to get damage and the crowd controlling component using the explosion, the 5 meter AoE. As for the critical chance and critical multi, this applies again to the explosion, not to the actual projectile hitting the target, so bear that one in mind. We got a fall off of 0 to 20. Now, just to give you guys a clear understanding of what the hell is 20 meters in Warframe, this is pretty much it. This is the 20 meter point. So at the end of those 20 meters, my projectile will be losing about 80% of the damage it deals. But again, it only applies to the projectile, not to the explosion itself. So we don't really need to worry about that one. The fire rate of 1.25 with a magazine of 15 and a reload of 3.0 seconds. And of course, noise alarming as well. Now the reload can be a bit of a bother as it is a tad long at 3 seconds, but considering that your enemies will be drooling on the ground, you shouldn't really have much of an issue with the reload. Status chance of 0%, which is true only for the projectile. The status chance of the explosion is 25% base. There's a lot of things in Warframe that are not shown on the stat screen, so bear that one in mind. Trigger semi, so you're gonna have to click the crap out of your mouse or controller, whatever. Impact damage by default 50. Now impact damage currently in Warframe is kind of seen like the plague as on a status proc it simply staggers enemies and everybody chases damage like there's no tomorrow. Between you and me you don't really need to deal that much damage to get through all of the content that Warframe has to offer. Now we're gonna start applying some mods, starting with what I call mandatory mods. We're gonna start with multi-shot, which is currently one of the biggest deals in Warframe. On secondary weapons, there are two standard mods that give you multi-shot. First, Barrel Diffusion. This one will grant 120% multi-shot. That means that at a click of a button, you're gonna be able to fire multiple projectiles. With Barrel Diffusion, you have a guaranteed second projectile and a 20% chance at a third projectile. The second mod is not as common as Battle Diffusion, this one is called Lethal Torrent and it's a dual stat mod, you get 60% fire rate, jumping to 2.0, and you also get 60% multi shot. Now with 180% multi shot that means once again I have a guaranteed second projectile and an 80% chance with Lethal Torrent at a uh, third projectile. If you don't know where to farm Lethal Torrent, this one appears on alerts. They're nightmare missions, so if you're a bit more lower in MR, try to get a friend or ask in trade chat or not trade chat, in recruiting chat for somebody to help you and rest assured the Warframe community, for the most part, is very friendly and helpful. Next, we're gonna go to damage. When you're talking about damage, there are a few mods that must be mentioned. First of all, we're gonna be talking about Hornet Strike, 220% extra damage, fully maxed out. Now, if you don't have the endo just yet to fully max this one out, don't worry about it so much. Prioritize Barrel Diffusion and Lethal Torrent over it and just leave this one two little balls from the top. It's gonna be just fine. Another fantastic damage mod which is common and easy to get is called Augur Pack with 90% extra damage. Now this one you should receive for free, in all honesty, nobody should charge you plat for this one. But if you want to get it by yourself, I respect that you go down to Cetus and you do the bounties. You will see the rewards down there. Honestly, it's not that hard to get. Next we're gonna go to critical chance and critical damage and talk about it, we're not actually gonna equip it and don't worry we're not gonna be using any prime mods today. Now take a look at pistol gambit, 120% critical chance on weapons that have a decent base critical chance, this mod is absolutely fantastic, not so in the case of the Sonicor. You will see that even if I add the prime version of pistol gambit, I'm only getting 28.7, so that's 18.7 extra. Honestly, it's simply not worth it in the case of the Sonic Ore. But after you prioritize your Battle Diffusion and Lethal Torrent, try to max out your Pistol Gambit. So bear that one in mind. Next, we're gonna go to Elemental Damage, and this is a whole other conversation, so try to bear with me. Elemental Damage is not something that you put on and forget about it. Only in the case of a Viral Elemental Combo, but more on that later. Elemental damage should be applied depending on circumstance. Where are you going? Who are you shooting? If you want to get the most damage out of the weapon. Each faction having their own unique vulnerabilities and resistances to different damage types. So when you're looking at these, at least when I was lower in MR and I was looking at, okay, should I go for heat, electricity, cold, what, are they the same? Does it matter? Yes, it does matter a lot. So for example, the Grenier faction are currently recognized as being some of the toughest targets in Warframe. The Roundheads. They have two armor types. Alloy and 
Ferrite Armor Alloy is weak to radiation damage, which is an elemental combo between electricity and heat, and Ferrite Armor is weak to corrosive damage, which is the elemental combo between electricity and toxin. You don't need to remember all of this stuff right now, just bear with me. When you're talking about the Corpus faction, the bucket heads with big shields, they're vulnerable to toxin and they're also vulnerable to gas damage as this will bypass their shields entirely and deal damage to their health. Now there are some Corpus units, especially if an index, if you're going index, simply build radiation damage because underneath those shields they have alloy armor, so bear that one in mind. When you're talking about the infested, these are still some of the weakest targets in Warframe, but they're still a tad tricky because they have four health types, each with their own unique vulnerabilities and resistances to damage. Don't worry about them too much, simply build heat against them and the results should be at least decent, if not great. Other than that, keeping in mind that the infested kind of tend to swarm you with their numbers. They're not exactly very powerful one by one, but there's a lot of them, so AoE weapons will deal uh, will do fantastically well against them. That said, I'm gonna go for a random elemental combo in this case. Let's go with Convulsion, the 90% mod, and we're also gonna be going with Heated Charge. Now, this will make the elemental combo of radiation. Again, if I remove the heat, I got electricity. Each of these elementals will have a different status proc, and you can find that info out on the wiki, so I don't need to make a two hour long video. Keeping in mind that the elemental combos will depend on where they're positioned on your modding screen as they are always 2x2 two two with the priority from top left to bottom right. So right now I have radiation on the weapon but if I was to take the toxin 90% mod and place it over here you will see that the elemental combo has changed and I no longer have radiation. I have corrosive as an elemental combo as the toxin is getting combined with the electricity and heat is last in the priority so it's kind of left hanging. Now of course I can add one more elemental to the weapon, something like cold which will get combined and so on and so forth, you get that one right? Which is why swapping these around with swap polarity can make a big difference so you can get the right elemental combo for the right encounter. Now there's also the dual stat mods when it comes to elemental damage and let me show all of them to you. Again, these apply to secondary weapons, but secondary weapons, primary weapons, even melee weapons have kind of the same architecture when it comes to mods, so don't worry about it too much. From the 6060 mods, only Jolt is a problem to obtain. The rest of them, Scorch, Pistol Pestilence and Frostbite, are pretty easy to get, most of them from spy missions, if not Templat, and again, Pistol Pestilence is farmable from Corrupted Vore in the Void. Now you can go mod and get this one or try to get it, but if you're going mod at low MR you will get destroyed, so try to get a couple of buddies to help you out, or just simply give you the mod. Again, it's only Templat, for the love of God, stop charging Plat for this one. Anyway, back to Jolt, 60% electricity and 60% status chance. The reason this mod is rare and costs a lot more plat, I'm talking 50, 60, even up to 100 plat, is that it's not farmable from the game. It's only brought by Battle Tier, the Void Trader. Now this guy comes every two weeks in a relay and he sells rare and new stuff, which is why the stuff he brings sometimes is not only exclusive to him, but also very expensive. Stay away from Jolt for now. You will get it when you will get it. Don't worry about it too much. Just go for what you have available. We're gonna go with heat. Heat will be combined into my toxin and I got gas on the weapon which is very good versus corpus units and not only. And if I can also add something like frostbite for example and I'm gonna be getting another elemental combo, magnetic, the elemental combo between cold and electricity. Now the status chance these mods provide you don't see the benefit on the screen, you still see 0% as 0% plus 60% it's still 0% but again keep it in mind that the status chance of the explosion is 25% with 260-60 mods on my status chance for the explosion goes up to 55%. Status chance means that per shot that is your chance of applying a status effect. What status effect will depend on the numbers of your weapon. So let's take a quick look over here. These are the damage values for the explosion, not for the actual projectile. Believe it or not, the actual projectile impact deals more damage than the explosion. Impact, magnetic and gas and the values will decide exactly what is the proc priority. Each of these has a percentage of proccing and again the values decide exactly what is the percentage. The higher the value, the higher the percentage of proccing. However, there is one golden rule in Warframe which doesn't really matter that much for the Sonic Core but this info will serve you greatly for future builds. The physical types, impact, 
puncture and slash have a four times greater chance at proccing over elemental types such as magnetic, gas, heat, toxin, all of them. So when you're trying to take a look at the weapon and trying to figure out exactly what is the proc priority, remember to multiply IPS times four. So in this case, my impact is well over 2000 as a proc value. There we go, this is going to be our initial build, so let's go and test it. And again, keep it in mind that elemental damage should be applied depending on who you're fighting exactly. Damage is not really the important part to the Sonic Core anyway. We're going to be spawning in level 30s because I believe this is MR2 appropriate. If you're MR2 free, I doubt you're going to be seeing enemies higher level than this, but we're going to pump it up a bit later. As you can see, the Sonic Core is a fantastic weapon and can absolutely tear through these targets like there's no tomorrow. Just a couple of shots, if not a one shot on these targets, especially the Corpus again, because I do have gas on the weapon. Now, the targets which are a bit more tough are these Corrupted Heavy Gunners. Their health bar is orange because remember, they have armor. If you were to fully strip the armor from this guy, his health bar would also be going to, uh, whatchamacallit, to red. So bear that one in mind. As you can see, against lower level targets, the weapon does fantastically well. So if you're looking for a weapon that can take you through the quote-unquote star chart, by the way, when people say star chart, they simply mean all of the missions that are available currently on your navigation screen. So again, for star chart missions, there is no better friend than the Sonic Core. It is absolutely fantastic and I would recommend this weapon to any newer player. When you're talking about endgame content, even though I still deny its existence, we're gonna pump up the level to, let's see, 135? Sure, why the hell not? Now let's see how the damage stacks up. When it comes to prime mods on this one, I'm not gonna recommend any. The only prime mod that would make sense on the Sonic Core would be Prime Heated Shock. Take a look at that. I'm still crowd controlling the crap out of my targets, but damage is simply not there. That is a big difference in terms of damage. I'm simply not dealing that much damage to these targets. The Sonic Core is not a damage weapon. It cannot... I mean, I need to shoot this guy even with the elemental combo that I have like five times to kill him. And there are much more powerful weapons in terms of damage than the Sonic Core. But the crowd controlling component will always be useful regardless of the level of the content you're doing. Ironically... Because taking into account that when you're lower MR, you don't really need the crowd control as the enemies don't deal that much damage to you. You kind of need the crowd control when you're doing higher level content. For example, if you guys want to stay in a defense or a survival for a couple of hours, you will see level 100s, 200s, 500s, and so on and so forth. And that's when you actually need the crowd control. Not when you're doing level 20s, 30s, and so on and so forth. Again, elemental damage should be applied depending on circumstance and you can build a Sonic Core whichever way you like. You're never gonna get it to kill it a level 120, 140 corrupted heavy gunner easily. It's simply not doable and that's not what the Sonic Core is for. But everybody likes to see damage, so I'm gonna switch to another build. This is a corrosive only build. As you saw there, the tougher targets were the corrupted heavy gunner because of the armor they have on. This one is purely corrosive and corrosive against ferrite armor that the corrupted heavy gunners have has a 75% bonus damage modifier. So bear that one in mind. As for a Warframe, I'm gonna show you guys some extreme buffs using my favorite damage frame, Lady Mirage Prime. Now, she's not the highest damage frame in the game, but she is the one that, from my point of view, has the best view. And we're gonna change to something like this. There we go. Let me take you for Warframe buffs just a little bit. When it comes to auras, we have these amp auras. Rifle amp, for example, pistol amp, and so on and so forth. These will increase your damage by 25%. Even though the Sonic Core is not exactly a traditional style pistol, the damage will carry over to the Sonic Core. This is an aura, so everybody in your party receives this benefit, and it is stackable times four, as in if everybody uses the same pistol amp. From my point of view, it's not worth beating yourself over getting a pistol amp and simply use something for utility, for example, like energy siphon, growing power, or if you know you're fighting Grenier, you're always gonna get better results with something like corrosive projection. However, the amp auras will grant their benefit regardless of the target that you're shooting. When it comes to arcanes, you guys are probably far off from arcanes, but these are kinda like mods for your Warframe only, they're not exactly like mods. These are farmed from 
idle on hunts. I can't really go too much into it, but you can farm them from down on Cetus, the plains of Eidolon. Killing an Eidolon will get you an arcane. Now, it won't get you these rank freeze that you see here. It will simply get you, for example, one like this. In order to upgrade an arcane to the maximum rank of free, you're gonna need 10 identical ones. Let me see if I have any just to show you guys. There we go. We got 11 of consequence. Next rank, next rank, next rank, and there we go. That is an R3. Now let's talk about synergies with the actual Sonic or what I would recommend you guys do in case you have this Avenger, Avenger R3. Now this is a fantastic arcane on damage. You got a 14% chance for 30% critical chance for 8 seconds. But wait, you said the critical chance is low and it's not worth it. That is true. However, the buff from Arcane Avenger is a additive bonus effect, which means it simply adds on top of whatever you have on your weapons. For example, you have a weapon with 0% crit chance, but if the buff from Avenger goes up then you're gonna be going to 30% guaranteed that is one option another option is to go for pure damage what was it precision yes now this one is for secondary weapons arcane precisions and it states that you got an 80% chance on headshot for plus 120% damage to pistols it's not the pistols it's to secondary weapons so bear that one in mind now let me show you what kind of damage we can get out of the Sonic or when we use heavy duty buffs. Now the same targets as before, only this time I'm gonna be unpausing them so they can hit me and I can get my buff from Arcane Avenger. Activate Mirage's free ability for a massive damage increase as well as her clones. And I'm gonna do one shot. Two shots. As you can see, I did a whole lot more damage than before. And you're also noticing that... My crowd control kind of way in top. These guys are flying much further. That, that's in part due to my clones. So bear that one in mind. I can one-shot Corpus without any problem. But as before, heavily armored targets are a lot harder to kill than that. Even with all these buffs, considering the armor they have, it will still take 5-6 to six shots with all of these buffs to kill corrupted heavy gunners. Armor is a big deal in Warframe when it comes to taking out a target, but you don't necessarily have to use just your gun to strip away the armor because this is not an armor stripping weapon. You can use an ability, for example, Ash has a very interesting, uh, what's it called, augment that can cause all of the armor to be gone with a single ability, and then you can simply finish off your target with the Sonic Orb. I know I'm overstressing this, but again, this is not a weapon meant for damage, this is a weapon meant for crowd control, and it can make absolutely beautiful things happen. Now, you guys may have heard about Riven mod, get a Riven, yes, a Riven will make everything better, and sadly, that is a bit of a lie, you gotta know exactly what to look for in a Riven, depending on your weapon to get the most out of it. Currently, when it comes to Sonic Core Rivens, they're not really worth it because the disposition of the Sonic Core is only 1 out of 5. The disposition will control the amount of stats, how high are the stats on your Riven mods. And with a disposition of 1, you are getting lower stats than normal average everyday mods. Long story short, not that you, not, not that you should have access to Riven mods, it's not really worth going for a Riven on the Sonic Core, at least from my point of view. And I believe that's pretty much gonna do it for this tutorial. But before I go, one last bit of small advice. If you're currently low MR and having a blast for the star chart, don't rush it. Take my word for it, there's nothing to rush for and you can never take it back. As always, my name is Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. If you have any feedback for me, then by all means, leave it in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below, if you wanna request a specific weapon review. Now, while I can't exactly guarantee you that it will be done by next time or even within a week, I will be reading through each and every comment. Until next time, guys, you can find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. Bye-bye.